What up, party people? What up, YouTube? This is Chef, New Zealand Murder History Podcast. The show's not suitable for children. We'll discuss double murder, uh, suicide, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, kids click off. Anyone badly affected by suicide or um, just not having a very good day, perhaps you too should click off and see your doctor for support. We'll call one of the many 800 numbers available. My show is just for educational purposes and not to cause offence to um, Scott Watson, Guy Wallace, not to offend the families of Ben Smart and Olivia Hope, definitely not, or really offend anybody. It's just for educational purposes. I'm just making this show for YouTube. So check this out. Now let's reference this paper first. So this article, Watson Can Challenge Evidence. That's in the press, Thursday, 26th of May, 2022. So, that's today's paper, the day I'm recording this. is, of course, Thursday, the 26th of May. And, yeah, the press. That's what I'm referencing. But I know a lot more about the case than is written in this article, but I am going to read this entire article. But let me just fill you guys in for those who um, may not know. This is one of the most controversial South Island uh, murder cases in the sense a lot of people think Scott Watson didn't do it. The more I look into this case, I think he didn't do it as well. I don't really know. I don't know Scott Watson. I never knew Ben Smart and Olivia Hope. I was uh, um, pretty young when they, you know, got murdered. So, um, yeah. I don't know, but what I do know is the Crown's version of events, it's all kind of weird. So let, let me just let me just fill you in on what's gone on here. So, or what I know to have gone on from the media. Ben Smart and Olivia Hope, well, they were in Marlborough Sounds in 1998. It was New Year's Eve. Um, and they were drinking at the same lodge that Scott Watson was drinking at. Uh, I'll find it here get the name of that, I don't want to mispronounce it, so, f um, anyway, it was this lodge, right, I'll find it shortly, and, you know, they're drinking, because it's, it's New Year's Day, and, um, yeah, anyway, so it's New Year's Eve, rather, and then it's the early morning of New Year's Day, and they catch a water taxi back to their boat, now, when they got to their boat, these drunk party crash people were asleep in their boat, on in their beds. Now, they didn't really know what to do. They're a young couple. Uh, I think they were 18 and 19 at the time. They might have even been slightly younger than that. But, yeah, I think they're 18, 19. Olivia Hope was 18. He was 19, I believe. But, yeah, anyway, Ben Smart and Olivia Hope, they don't know what to do because these people are crashed out on their boat. They can't just tell them to bugger off because... They're on a boat, so what are these drunk people going to do, you know, go swim to shore? Like, that's not a safe option. So they tried to do the responsible thing, and they caught a water taxi away from their own boat. Um, this is where it gets weird. Okay, so the dude who drops them off is Guy Wallace. Now, Guy Wallace was also the bartender at the Fuevu... Lodge. I'm just. I'm going to read the article shortly. I'll get the proper name. It's a French name. I'll probably butcher it, but you know what I mean. It's a. Um, he was the bartender, and um, anyway, not the guy I'm filming. That's Scott Watson. Guy Wallace. He died um, last year of a suicide. He was a sketchy individual. He was a pedophile, and he was having financial troubles. Yeah, so he ended his life. But a lot of people think he ended his life because he felt guilty about the evidence he gave against Scott Watson. Uh, he himself says he doesn't feel good about the evidence he gave. But here's the thing. Scott Watson, he doesn't look good because he was really drunk that night and he was going around basically propositioning every woman in his circumference for sex. So... Immediately he looks sketchy, but his criminal record is actually not that bad. He's been done for like marijuana and assault. So I don't know, he punched someone out at some stage and 
smoked a bit of weed. I mean, yeah, okay, he's n- not perfect, but does that make him a double murderer? Well, it's hard to know. Here's the problem. They never found their bodies, so whoever murdered them may have taken them out into the Cook Strait. Now, Scott Watson did have a boat, but could he really sail in the state that he was in? I think he probably could, to be honest, because he was a boat guy. He grew up on boats. He knew boats very well, but he was also legless. He was completely drunk. Could he have successfully killed a bloke and a chick in the state he was in. So he's still fighting two people in a fight. I don't know what weapons he was supposed to have had on him, but not really. He was pretty, um, I mean, you see the photos of him at the lodge and he looks completely trashed. So I don't know. There's the only evidence were these two blonde hairs that were supposed to be Olivia Hope's hairs. This article I'm reading suggests that the forensic evidence was flawed and that maybe maybe they weren't even her hairs. But here's the weird thing. Those two hairs were found on the second search of Scott Watson's boat. Two big, long, golden, blonde hairs. How come they didn't see that on the first search? I mean, that's exactly the kind of stuff they're looking for. Would the police stitch him up? Because they believe he did it, so they just needed a bit more evidence. I mean, that's what Scott Watson and his supporters seem to think. It's a weird case, but here's where it gets even... um, I'm just going to finish describing this, what I know anyway, a little bit more before I read the article. Check this out for bad. The dude... I'm talking about Guy Wallace now, so the guy who was driving the water taxi, sailing it, whatever you do with it, he's a boat guy you know he's got a little water taxi boat so guy wallace he said that there was somebody on the boat who one stage he thought it was scott watson another stage it wasn't but he dropped them off at a two-masted boat i believe it was a catch and scott watson owned a one-masted sloop now, I'm not a boat guy. I might have those words around the wrong way, but I'm fairly certain he said he dropped them off at a two-masted catch in the Scott Watson's boat as a one-masted sloop. Now, here's the thing. A bloke like me, if I was the water taxi driver, I wouldn't know the difference between a catch and a sloop. I'm not going to notice if a little boat has one or two masts. I mean, I, I might, but it's, it's nighttime. It's like four in the morning. But a boat guy like Scott Wallace, he's going to spot stuff like that straight away. He knows all that stuff, you know. That boat has two masts. It's a sloop. It's a catch. Anyway, another thing that is kind of strange is um, Scott Watson, he cleaned his boat. But it was because his sister was coming to stay on the boat with him. So police are saying, hey, he cleaned his boat because he done the... the, um, Major crime, the double murder, you know? Okay, well, maybe. But if your sister was coming to stay on a boat with you, and we're talking about a really small boat here, you would clean the boat, wouldn't you? If he cleaned the boat for forensic evidence, how come those two golden hairs were still there? I mean, I know the bloke wears glasses, maybe he wasn't wearing them that day, but I don't know, the more I look into it, the more I think he may not have done it. But he may have, I'm not sure. He. Um, anyway, let's read this article, eh? Article, Watson can challenge evidence. The man convicted of murdering Ben Smart and Olivia Hope can argue against crucial eyewitness evidence at his up-and-coming appeal. This article is by Mike White. Scott Watson will be allowed to challenge crucial eyewitness evidence when he appeals his conviction for murdering Ben Smart and Olivia Hope in the Marlborough Sounds in 1998. 
In a decision released yesterday, the Court of Appeal has ruled that Watson can argue whether an identification of him as a mystery man last seen with the pair was properly obtained and should have been heard by a jury at his trial. The identification was made by one of the last people to see Hope and Smart, water taxi driver Guy Wallace, when he was shown a photo montage by police during their investigation. The montage has always been controversial, as it included a photo of Watson caught during a blink, so he's blinking in the photo, which matched other descriptions of the mystery man having hooded eyes. Watson and his supporters have always argued that the photo was unnatural and unfair, as none of the others in the montage were blinking, and was included by police in an effort to get Wallace to identify their prime suspect. Wallace told police that the photo of Watson in the montage looked most like the mystery man, but with some significant differences. Okay, that sounds really sketchy. Um, he subsequently denied that Watson was the man he dropped off at a mystery yacht with Hope and Smart. Watson has always denied meeting the pair. So, I know it's confusing, was Wallace and Watson, but anyway, Scott Watson is the dude who's in prison, he's still in prison, he's been down 24 years, so. Anyway, Watson has always denied meeting the pair, having them on his yacht, or killing them as his case remains one of the country's most controversial. Now 50, he's spent 24 years in prison and remains there after being denied parole four times. The case against Watson relied most strongly on two hairs found on a blanket on Watson's yacht. So the blade is, um, his, what? is his yacht, which were matched to Olivia Hope. However, Continuing concern about the reliability of the forensic testing of these hairs resulted in Watson's case being referred back to the Court of Appeal by the Governor-General in August 2020. But Watson's legal team sought to have the photo montage identification evidence also included in the appeal grounds as it has not been heard by the Court of Appeal previously. Yesterday, the Court of Appeal ruled that it could be heard saying its decision was necessitated by the interests of justice and now it's got a quote if there is one lesson learned from history of miscarriage of justice in the context of criminal appeals it is that no good is done by the procedural suppression of a tenable ground of appeal which has not yet seen the light of day in an appellate court whatever that means i'm not sure while other grounds of the appeal are nonetheless allowed to proceed, wrote former Court of Appeal President Stephen Coase. As Lord Atkin once finally observed, finality is a good thing, but justice is a better. Scott Watson's father, Chris Watson, said he was pleased the court had recognised that it was important to hear all the crucial evidence I have always had the impression that they had rather it was the end and that we go away, but I never really wanted to do that. The hairs and the identification are the only really tangible things the police had. The rest really boiled down to character assassination. Watson's appeal will be heard by the Court of Appeal on August the 31st. Okay, so that's the end of that section of the article, and then it's got another bit of background. So this part's titled Background. Guy Wallace described the man inviting Olivia Hope and Ben Smart to stay on his yacht at about 4 a.m. on New Year's Day, 1998. Wallace said, so Guy Wallace, the um, driver of the water taxi, or sailor, cat, whatever he is, all right. Wallace once said, The yacht was a wooden ketch, two masts about 12 metres long, with portholes, a blue stripe along its hull, and lots of rope work. Watson's yacht only has one mast. So Watson's yacht's the sloop. I did have that the right way around. Anyway, Watson's yacht only has one mast. 
and was about eight meter home built steel vessel with no portholes, no stripe on its hull, and no extensive rope work. I mean, those are some pretty big differences, you know, like he's describing the different boat. I mean, he's a boat guy. Wallace once said the only similarities between the yachts was that they both floated. Early in the investigation, police showed Wallace a photo of Watson, and Wallace said he did not recognise him, and he had not seen the man on the water taxi with Hope and Smart. He also denied that Watson was the mystery man. When shown video and photos of Watson by media, police prepared an initial montage of photos of men, including Watson, in January 1998, but no key witness identified Watson as the mystery man they had seen from the montage A. In March 1998, police changed the photo of Watson in a new montage to one with him caught halfway through a blink with his eyes half closed. When this montage B was shown to Wallace the following month, he cautiously identified Watson as the mystery man based on the appearance of of his drooping eyes which were similar to those of the mystery man he had seen at the Furnau Furnau uh, F-U-R-N-E-A-U-X Lodge Furnau the Furnau Lodge anyway though he noted that there were also differences in appearance Watson was the only person in the montage shown with his eyes half closed Later at a pre-trial hearing and at Watson's trial, Wallace denied or equivocally equivocate, equivocated on whether the man he identified in Montage B was the person he had dropped off at a yacht with Hope and Smart. However, his early identification of Watson was used as a crucial piece of evidence by the Crown. After the trial, Wallace, the guy Wallace, who died last year, consistently denied that Watson, so Scott Watson, was the man he last saw with hope and smart. He said he felt he played a part in sending an innocent man to jail. That's it, that's the end of the article. So that was pretty weird. Um, honestly, I don't know what to think. I mean, there's only really three options here. No, okay, there's four options. Option number four. Ben Smart and Olivia Hope drowned in some kind of accident. This is unlikely because they're New Zealanders. They can swim. Um, they weren't that drunk, or they were at least heaps less drunk than everyone else that night. It would be more likely one of them would drown than both of them. And if they had dr if they had drowned there in the Marlborough Sounds, their bodies would have been found, you know. There's, it's not impossible, but no, nah, that probably didn't happen. Especially that, like, neither one of them was found. Yeah, I don't think they drowned. But it's it's an outside possibility, you know. Option number two. Scott Watson done it took them out into the Cook Strait, where he knew the currents would take them away from New Zealand, and dropped them in, possibly weighted them down, who knows. I mean, yeah, that could have happened, but this dude was written off. Could he really have overpowered the two? I believe he probably could have sailed his boat in the condition he was in, because, um, well, he was a nautical bloke, and, um, yeah, he was good at sailing. What else can you say? But what if it was the bloke? Oh, so another option. It was the mystery man, and the mystery man is not Scott Watson, in which case, who is the mystery man? I don't know. But what if it was Guy Wallace? What if Guy Wallace done the double murder and then stitched up Scott Watson? I mean, it's pretty sort of like movie kind of plot because it's like the, the real killer is giving evidence in court. But New Zealand's small world, you know, stuff like that can happen. 
And um, I don't know. I just I just don't really trust a pedophile. They're very manipulative. Now, Olivia Hope wasn't a child, but um, you know they don't always stick to their victim profile. And another reason I think it could have been Guy Wallace is um, he was working at the time as a bartender on the Fear Now Lodge. So if anyone was able to target a couple, it would be the bartender because he could drug them without their knowledge. I mean, for this guy in the state he was in to, to target a couple as victims, I don't know, just, I don't know. The more I look into it, the more sketchy it sounds to me. But yeah, was it Guy Wallace? I don't know. And there wasn't a lot of CCTV around back then. I mean, there were some. There's pictures of the lodge and stuff like that. But I mean, you know, if there was a mystery man in a boat with two masts, did he just sail out of there before um, before Ben Smart and Olivia Hope were even reported missing? It's definitely plausible. I don't know. There's so much unknown in this case. I just really don't know. This bloke could have done it, but I don't actually think so. Have a good one, everybody.